Sentry as we know it consists of four main pillars. The first being error monitoring. We tell developers that their application is broken, give them all the details, and even show them the commit that caused that error so that we can get to addressing it. The second being release health. This is uh, giving you all the session specific information such as crash tree sessions for mobile. And then we have discover our query engine so that you can get uh, any of the data out of our platform that you need and query any of the events uh, and create dashboards. And then we have integrations, right? For uh, issue tracking, alerting, et cetera. Today we're here because uh, we're introducing a new piece of uh, functionality or a new pillar as we call it, uh, that being performance monitoring. We'll get to that in just a moment, but for those that are new to Sentry, I just want to do a quick level set of our error monitoring capabilities. So here I have my application and I have Sentry integrated. Uh, here you can see I've imported the package. So if this was Python, this would be pip install, Ruby gem install here, it's JavaScript, uh, so it's a uh, import via CDN or for Node.js npm install. And then all you have to do is sentry.init. I've done that here with your DSN, which is your unique key associated with your project. And we want errors to be shot up to sentry.io. So I'm going to go ahead and cause an error. When I click checkout, you can see there was an error. Uh, and instead of debugging with a log, since I have sentry implemented, I'm automatically going to be alerted. As you can see here, that a new error happened and that I should go and investigate. So from here, we can then go in, figure out all of the context, the who, what, when, where, why, so error type, error name, how many times it happened. We have similar errors aggregated, and we can even see the user impact. We can see that it flared up, most relevant to the developer, the stack trace. We can see uh, any of the frames that we want uh, and get all of the, the inline code context. and the breadcrumbs showing what happened in the application prior to hitting the error. So here we can see some items were added to cart, the checkout button was clicked, there was some sort of request, and then an error was thrown. And it looks like this error is happening on all of the various browsers. And it seems like it's only happening in this release, but any tag introduced into our system will produce a heat map to help us understand exactly who's impacted. From here, we understand exactly what went on if we have any knowledge of this code base. If not, we point out the commit that caused the error so we can directly assign to that individual and the person best equipped to fight this fire is on the job.